Hey, how you doing? I know I've been promising that I would uh, start putting forward proof. I wanted to express the narrative, which there's still more to go, but I need to put forward some solid evidence. Uh, I put forward that email. Uh, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna show you all some court paperwork. Okay, uh, that's Exhibit A in the in the uh, the matter beforehand here. So in my declaration. Um, Like I said, this is my declaration to the court. But the exhibit that I cited is from the probate matter in San Diego. So what you got right there, I want you to read that. That's Jessica Marie Lopez and I. That's our address, our old address in San Diego. That's our old phone number. Uh, that's Superior Court of San California, San Diego. Uh, case number 37 dash. 2010-0015-1397-PR-GP-CTL. This is in response of the guardianship of David Jesus Lopez. That's her other son. That's the one that she was going to school. She was going to San Diego State University with this other lady named Sandra Rubio, uh, who was going to school to be a social worker for and she was going for criminal justice. She's like, hey, do you want to meet my brother? I think you might like him. They hooked up. And he stepped into the role of the father for a short period of time. Because the uh, David's biological father was not in the picture at all. Like I said, to this day, he wants absolutely nothing to do. There have been multiple attempts, which is really messed up. Multiple attempts to try to, like, hey, you want to meet your son? Because David wanted to see his father. Father was like, no. And Jessica has made no no uh like enthusiastic energy to make sure that this dude is held accountable in any kind of way she just chalked it up and was like meh uh so that other individual's name was leon rubio they were dating he was you know doing the father thing and um <clears throat> after a while from this is what jessica explained to me that he didn't want to be a dad no more he want to be a family man he wanted to still go party and have some fun which is something that's consistent with her own behavior because she got pregnant. She was partying as a teenager. I got the pictures. I'm going to show it to y'all. And it was all about the party. It's still about the party. That's a major issue that we have to contend with. It's still about the party. Old girl out in San Jose, she said it right there at your apartment in Paradise Hills. I know y'all are probably watching. You even told her yourself, hey girl, you're married now. You have a kid. And remember what she was saying? No, I'm still going to party. I'm still going to party. That was in... 2011 12 something like that um it's 2023 um <clears throat> so I, like i said there's the positive advocates that run differently and then there's the negative advocates the ones in san jose i think are the best people um uh, they're honest uh they're honorable like they're not just honest but honorable people they're wonderful people and I know that they would have been like, hey, because they said it back then. They would have been like, yo, you can't do this. So got to keep the party going. Major issue of contention between us because it's like, hey, we're, we're, we're not young anymore. We have a child. He deserves that time. Not our friends to go out and party and do stupid shit, right? Because they don't own their homes. They Most of them aren't married, you know. We should be hanging with people that are like-minded and doing the same thing in the same direction. Um, so... Leon says, hey, I'm done with this. I'm going to go out from what she expressed to me. So he goes out and he's hanging out with his friends. His friends messed up. They're getting coked out, you know, coked out. They're drinking. His friend passes out at the wheel, allegedly, and the vehicle tumbles. He gets paralyzed as a result. And then he goes through a fit of depression because now it's like he's the only son out of multiple females he carries the name obviously he's not going to have a biological child at this point anymore and he's paralyzed you know so his life is different and he and supposedly jessica says that she went and helped take care of him and everything a little bit and that he wanted her to come back with him and she gave it a brief consideration but reality is hey you kicked me and my son to the curb but now you want me to come back and do this because you're in a unfavorable condition not really ideal for me so she elected not to but her life was moving on, and like I said, still want to party with the wink Jennifer and Roger and Hutch and all of her friends that are still, woo, you know, so she's trying to be a parent and still trying to be a party friend, party girl at the same time, which, hey, you got to set that shit aside and, and do right for that child, and, and um, so 
that's what I mean by the toxic friends. For 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 them knowing what she went through, they should have been like, no, nah, girl, when we're around you, we ain't even doing that. We're going to do something different. Nope. 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 Not even to this day. Um, so she's going through whatever chaos she's going. She gets a job at the halfway house. Uh, I'll cite the name of the place and I'll even cite the laws and the rules that govern a contractor for a contractor that has a relationship with the, with the Bureau of Prisons, the BOP and all that shouldn't be fucking inmates. And so this inmate, having sold heroin and meth with a bunch of other people and going to prison for it, then being placed in the custody of this halfway house and her on his caseload, which they admitted in court that he was on her caseload, it, you're not supposed to be fucking the inmates. And I've read the letters between him and her that I found after I moved to San Diego where he expresses their sexual endeavors at her apartment on J Street. And if you look at the, the, the tickets that she got for DUI, those addresses are North County. She's not from North County. She's from Southeast San Diego. So she was with them all that time. You look at the resume, the dates of employment. Then you look at the other places where she cited her address. You know, the, the, the lie was told by Marvin Mason court that, oh, you know what? I was on her caseload. And he says that, no, nah, like, man, we didn't do nothing until she left there. She, was, she had to quit that job because she got her second DUI because she was in an argument with him up in Vista. So... Spare me the bullshit, you know what I mean? So, But I'm going to put all that evidence forward, too. And just to go show you how scandalous these people are right now. This sworn first responder that lied to her first employer that she was going to be doing the right thing. And then she's fucking one of the inmates who's in there for slinging heroin and meth to, with fucking kids with him, man. And um, selfishly gets DUIs, her first DUI, then the second one. So she quits after the second one. Let's them know about the first one. They're like, all right, we're going to let you keep, we're going to let you stay on team. And then she got the second one and she just quit before they fucking fired her. Then she goes into this whole endeavor with Marvin Mace, right? <clears throat> so after they're doing all their shit, one day he's trying to show off a gun. Cheddar Bob shoots himself on accident. She calls an ambulance. Ambulance shows up. There's the shots fired, so they have to. The police come. They find drugs. They find money and a gun and all that shit. Obviously, so they're both arrested and they're both charged. Um, while she's in custody for that and for the DUI, because she had to do time for the second DUI in less than a year. Higher level of alcohol in the second one. Those are two enhancements. She had to do jail time. So all that time, her child was with the Rubio. She kind of dumped them off. That lady is a social worker for child welfare services. They're more than happy to take care of them because they had asked her to bring the child around to begin with because they said, hey, my brother's depressed. And, you know, we think that bringing, you know, your son around would bring him back out of it. Sure enough, it did. But then he's he's getting a need filled at that point. So is the sister, Sandra, because she don't have no kids. And she gets to play this auntie role that's more closer to a mother role to get those you know, wants and needs of motherhood uh, satisfied. I mean, you could see it like right out in the open right there that it was like, oh, I'm Thea, I'm Thea. But she really was like, I'm mom, I'm mom, my mom. And um, so her and Jessica were getting into it. I'll share the correspondence with you guys. They had it out. Um, but check this out. So when I tell you guys that it ain't cool, her getting drunk and all that, pissing on herself in front of our son right here, everything I'm saying is what she said about those people. Because when they were guardians, they were partying it up. Remember, dude's in a wheelchair because of his cocaine and his alcohol habit. And so that shit usually doesn't go away. And it didn't. When we went to, we had a birthday party, or they had a birthday party, 10th or 11th, for her son. They're ordering fucking um, buckets of beer and drinking right in front of her and, and taking pictures of the beer with the kid and everything. And it's like, so you guys say that this kid's mom is an alcoholic. Fair enough. Righteous. Proper. But then you're drinking in front of her kid. You're doing the same thing that, that you say that you're more wholesome and should not do in front of the child. And she was livid about that. And I didn't think it was cool at all. I'm like, hey, if that's the end goal is to represent sobriety and, and, and a good outcome for this young man, Y'all shouldn't be doing this either, but they're glorifying it. It's awkward to see somebody that's in a wheelchair for fucking drinking alcohol glorifying the alcohol, like in the picture. I'll show y'all the picture. But so we submitted to the court. I am, I, Jessica Lopez, and I hereby declare I am the mother of David Jesus Lopez, age 12 years old. Um, 
in the above title matter. I have personal knowledge as to the facts stated herein. I am submitting this supplemental declaration in response to Sandra Leone and Leon Rubio's supplemental declaration in opposition of my ex parte request to modify visitation dated May 22nd, 2013. In response to therapist Cristiani's letter dated May 22nd, 2013, I have never said that I had any plans to cut Leon and Sandra out of David's life. I know that Leon and, so uh, Leon and Sandra, excuse me, Oh. are a part of David's life, and I have no quarrel with that. It, hit, it has, however, since the beginning, when the stipulation and order aug dated August 11, 2011 was signed, been the goal to comply with the court order to rehabilitate myself and to reunify David with his biological family. How then would there be any co-parenting as they would not be making parental choices for David? I am, great I am grateful to the court for mandating my mandating my recovery and remain free of any vices. She was back then too, for the most part. Um, words cannot express the sadness I feel when considering the alcoholic behavior being impressed upon my son and being told there is nothing I can do about it. Being that Leon and Sandra neglected to tell FCS in the court that they have several alcoholics in their family and in the home. The court was not afforded the chance to see how they carry themselves when they think no one is watching. Sound familiar? That's my, my position, right? The social learning theory states that individuals become what they see in their environment and it has been proven conclusively that children of alcoholic parents are at a greater risk of be, being that it is passed down genetically. These two factors combined should make it apparent that it is not in David's best interest to have people drink and in part in front of him. Drinking party in front of him. His own behavior is reflecting the Rubio's household conduct as they cannot or will not see that this detrimental this is detrimental to his development. I do not I do not drink in the presence of my son. I do not drink in the presence of my son. Remember that. I do not drink in the presence of my son when I suffered from alcohol addiction. So do y'all hear what I'm she's saying? She's saying she didn't suffer, she didn't drink in front of David when she suffered from alcohol addiction. But she's been getting shit face hammered with her friends on a regular in front of our son Michael. Afforded a second chance to do the right thing, to right the wrongs that she puts in her own thing by getting fucked up and pissing on herself and all that shit in front of our little boy with her fucking friends that are like, yeah, fuck it, girl, yeah, bitch. This day is get fucked up, bitch. I'm like, man, dude, my son's right there, man. And then they're like, well, nobody's perfect. Oh, you know, he could become an alcoholic for others. Like, what the fuck you talking about? Mom and dad got to be great role models. We can't be getting fucked up in front of our little son. And, I mean, look, you can have five other motherfucking people getting fucked up. But if mom and dad are sober, that gives them a second chance. When we've already selfishly... As an addict and as an alcoholic, giving him the genes that put him greater at risk. So what we do and what we allow the people around us, that's the other thing that we can do to give him a better chance not to go down the fucked up paths that we have been. Okay? So, um, I, did not, I did not drink in the presence of my son when I suffered from alcohol addiction so it is even more disappointing to see the rubios glorify alcohol man i can show you all the pictures they put bottles up and all this stupid shit man it's just, every picture on their fucking friends profiles is about them getting drunk thank you guys for putting those pictures up so i can show them how the fuck you guys roll all your bullshit fucking facade let me show them, thanks to you guys putting that shit out there, I'm going to show everybody who the fuck you guys are and what you guys been doing in front of my son. Fucking assholes. Okay. Disappointing to see the Rubios glorify alcohol consumption to my son. In these pictures, you will see the true side of Leon Rubio and his sisters. Take notice of the expression on his face and body language. You will see pride. Pride and ego is what harms most people, even those who are not addicts. Please take note of the behavior that is putting David's education at risk. There are also some ego and pride as he rebels against those who are trying to help him. Sandra, Leon, and Rubio, San, Leon or Sandra Rubio have led David to believe that he was taken from me and placed 
with them because of my drinking, and yet they drink and party in front of him, which was true. I was like, that ain't that ain't fucking cool, you know. But it wasn't about what was in the best interest of David. It was, but it weren't. It was, it was, it was but it was not. You know, they had selfish intentions too, you know. He was mad at her because she didn't stay with him after he ditched them and then got paralyzed. And he wants to change his mind. And the other, you know, the family really held her responsible for that. It was fucked up. But she had her hand in that too. Instead of being off selling fucking drugs, heroin and meth to addicts, the people suffering from addiction, her, her and Marvin May selling heroin and meth, which is two of the, it's like mental slavery. If you've ever met or known somebody suffering from heroin and meth addiction, it's brutal. Yet she was walking into Mexico, stuffing her vagina full of heroin, walking it back, selling it in North County with Marvin Mace, and eventually they get arrested. She could have died. She could have been arrested. She's got getting the DUIs. She should have been with her son, David. I'd love for her to come on here or come anywhere and, hey, give an explanation. Tell them what you told me, which was, oh, I couldn't have my son around the drug dealer and all that stuff. What? What? You would think that like somebody would be like, hey, I shouldn't be doing this because my son's over there suffering. And no, but that ain't the answer because you're dealing with narcissists. And when you're dealing with narcissists, they're not going to be like, hey, I should have done this. I should have done that. They're just going to be like, oh, no, no. They're going to give you a permission statement. That's why we call this the permission statement, because that's an important thing to identify in our in our cognitive cycle is when we're giving ourselves permission when is our brain lying to us to get us to do shit that's detrimental so um and they partied in front of him on a regular basis leon is in a wheelchair because of drinking and his father was sent to dui classes but continues to drink leon and sandra rubio's Sisters also party and drink in front of David and have impressed upon him this gangster style of carrying oneself. With all this being said, I hope that the court will see why I'm concerned and strongly opposed to Leon and Sandra Rubio making choices for my son. Okay? I'll continue further, but these videos can't be too long. This is a this, Okay, so this is my order to the court by asking same things, and I have to cite evidence. Evidence. You see that right there? It's a long one. It's a long one. I have more exhibits. Um, but uh, we'll go through that later because I'm already at 17 minutes. I don't want to occupy. But it's going to be important. I'm going to be putting actual proof in front of y'all. Photographs, emails, uh, family court paperwork and all that. Because I understand that a lot of people come here and they're just bitter and angry. And their their intentions are selfish ulterior motives so i want to put this out there in front of y'all when i met her she was getting sober i was going ali and, and, and maricela hey bitch none of y'all went to no aa meetings with, with, with her did you did you guys go to court with her and watch her crumble and cry and try to stand up and fight for her did you oh here in napa maybe because y'all were trying to protect her alcoholism because y'all were getting drunk with her in front of my son here Right? But you guys didn't see what she went through in San Diego because of all that negative behavior, everything that she lost, supervised visits, everything. I had to drive. I had to take her to her damn drug test, AA me, all that stuff. PC 1000. She wasn't innocent, man. She pled guilty. It's a deferred entry of judgment. PC 1000. For those of you who ain't from California, I'll explain to you what a PC 1000 is and it'll probably blow your mind. So if you've been through a PC, if you've been arrested for some egregious stuff here in California, and you did a PC-1000, hey, you can come to Napa and still get a job because they hired her. Oh, that's because she did a PC-1000. And that's the argument that they're trying to make in court right now was, it's not that you did this stuff, but, hey, you did a PC-1000, you know what I mean? I mean? I guess it's okay to do all that crazy shit. So I just want people to know before she goes out there and tells other people, hey, didn't you do some funky-ass shit, right? So Ale, Maricela... Weenie, all of them, you guys, I mean, Weenie, you were part of all that stuff in San Diego, part of the party, but did you sit there and fight with, fight by her side and go to court and see her go through all that stuff and crumble? No, but to come here and try to advocate and use your guys' connections with um, Helen Paleo Rodriguez and Maricela Paleo and, all, and, and Michelle trying to, having Michelle come and lie on, we ain't done with that one yet. 
all these people because they're interwoven into the system here in Napa, child welfare services, Napa Empower Women's Services, right? You got the county supervisor, which I got some pictures here on the computer. I'll be firing up on my next video so y'all can see just how interwoven. And anytime I would go anywhere to try to get help to protect my son, bam, hit that wall. Because they're going to protect Napa County, Napa County's interests, child welfare service, and the process. My son deserves better than that. So I'm trying, I'm going to show you guys this, that what she said then is what I've been saying, but yet, whew, she, she left all that in the dust. And when I asked her about it, she said, I was only saying that because I had to back then. Well, that would have been nice to know back then, because I thought that she was serious about change and about recovery. And... There's a lot of people here in Napa that are going to advocate for the behavior because they don't ever see it. There's the ones that are part of the problem. Then there's the ones who have absolutely no idea this shit was going on or the history. So they're just like, oh, no, no. She's above reproach. What? What? So because they've never seen it. So now I'm showing it to y'all. So when I came to you guys and just asked for help. It should have been reasonable, but no, they want, they didn't want to see that. They didn't want to see that because if they did, oh shoot, now we have to do something about one of our peers, one of our team members that needs some help because you see the dark shit. That ain't nothing. The permission statement, ride with